just been hit with a fever of 101 and I thought, let's talk about solo games. This is second play. Let's get into it. So people don't want to be around you when you're sick, but also sometimes you just want to play a board game but there's no one around. And I think it, it, it starts a conversation about what, what we're talking about by solo game. If it's a, a game that is solely made for a single person to play, or if it's a game that is a bigger game, has the option to play it by yourself, against yourself, or against the, the game. So I don't have all the games with me, but the first one that I was thinking was... Celavon. Um, this series by Z-Man Games has a lot of good games within the series. It was a nice little quick, neat game that you can play. I'm getting into a few other games that are really good one player, but you're just playing against the game. Um, Terraforming Mars. Both Scythe, playing Scythe one player um, is really challenging, um, but you get the experience of what Scythe is. As and also along those lines is wingspan. Are you just playing for points? But it really does, you know, give you a good feel of what the game is. Moving into more of the story-driven games, the biggest story one would be Gloomhaven or Jaws of the Lion. Arkham Horror, the card game. That one, just, you know, smashes you through the story and, and you work to try and solve the mystery. Number seven. I bought Robinson and Crusoe as a solo game and heard about how challenging it was. And that island killed me so many times. Um, Robinson Crusoe is such a good game solo. Number eight. Number eight. New York Zoo. So if you like the puzzle style game, New York Zoo has a solo mode um, where you've got to do it within a certain amount of rounds. Oh, sorry, I haven't been my energetic self. Oh, two that I saw. I didn't grab it. Oh is Epic Little Galaxy for bang for your buck, it's really cheap, you can play it solo if you're hardcore. Get Spirit Island, play that single player. And be hardcore. Stay amazing.